Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, Oda gave us some spicy teasers at Jump Festa this week, which are very relevant to what to expect in the story and confirm some things we were anticipating. This is most of the transcript, just what I believe to be the most interesting and important. Shoutouts and a thank you to Archer and Eaton Bobby for this translation. Oda says this, Odin's adventures, have you been enjoying them? I have to watch out for what is fine to reveal in these chapters while I'm drawing them. If I don't restrain myself, I might end up revealing every secret in the series. That said, while we're focused on these flashbacks for now, the importance behind Luffy and the others' adventures and the meaning behind their fights will soon become clear to us. But Luffy doesn't care about that sort of stuff though, does he? At this point, the Wano Country arc is reaching its core. I've been excited to draw these parts of the arc, so here we go. But elsewhere in the world, Sabo will, Vivi will, Hancock will, this is me screaming in terror. Ah! Ah! Dear God, I sound like a dying goat. And finally, things are starting to develop in such a way that the end game might soon be in sight. Keep an eye out for it. This upcoming year of One Piece will be an absolute blast, so stay tuned. So my pathetic voice acting aside, wow. Obviously a lot to take in here, some more important than other bits. Overall, I find this to be a lot tamer than last year's, uh, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. I personally think that there is such a thing as revealing too much outside of the manga and overhyping people to the point to where their expectations spiral out of control. That being said, I want to first focus on the fates of Sabo, Vivi, and Hancock. I've been wanting to make a video about them regardless, so the timing really couldn't be any more perfect. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously a lot of what we had already figured. Just a few chapters ago, we had this ominous reveal about Sabo, Vivi, uh, and Hancock, so their mention isn't world breaking. In chapter 956, we revisited the world government, the kings, and morgans at the conclusion of the reverie. Garp tells us something has happened to Princess Vivi and the kingdom of Alabasta. The scene switches over to morgans working on some big news. He claims somebody has died, and another murder was attempted. Did Vivi die? Well, in my opinion, no. Of course, we should have known that to begin with. And to be honest, Odo is more interested in leaving us concerned for Sabo rather than Vivi. But I'm going to say this now, and I'll probably say this again in the future. There is just no way that Vivi dies off screen like this. I don't want to see no comments, but JB, are you sure that Vivi is alive? Please stop. But anyway, we then move forward and the Revolutionary Army is reading the newspaper. We learn something has happened to Sabo. Is Sabo the one that died? There's literally two full pages of reactions to Sabo's news, and everybody that we see who would be friends with him is upset. Like, really upset. Like, Sabo could have died upset. It really seems like, during this chapter, Oda was trying to sell us that Sabo had died. But again, no. I think he obviously survived. Oda is not killing Sabo like this, for the very same reasons that we just discussed about Vivi. Now, I want you to understand the complexity of speculation here. Sure, I believe we know for sure Sabo has not died. But even if you were to be with me, couldn't Sabo be dead in the newspaper? What stops that from being fake news? The little details here matter because it helps us piece together what actually happened. The more ambiguous it is, and this is pretty dang ambiguous, the less that we can be certain of anything. So what do we actually know? We know something has happened to Sabo and Vivi. We know someone has died, and it suggested another murder was attempted. We know the world government wanted to, in some way, for some reason, cover up something in the news. I would like to speculate that the world government wanted to cover up this murder, but we don't know that. There were several bits of news on this day, and Morgan's even asks, which news do they want me to cover up? And he doesn't reveal. And a small detail, that Wapple has some kind of intel for Morgan's that could relate to all of this. At the surface, this is what we have. We obviously need more. So let's start with the layup. This is something that we had speculated beforehand, and this chapter seemed to help confirm this idea. It, as it appears to me, the world government wants to kill Vivi and Cobra. During the reverie, we can see Emu and the Gorose talking about a great cleansing and potentially speculating on who exactly they want to target and take out. And as it appeared to me beforehand, Vivi was the ultimate choice. This is in combination with the fact that Cobra told us beforehand, before the reverie, that he was going to ask questions that he should not have. This would further make Alabasta a target. In my opinion, Vivi and Cobra have reason to fear the world government. 
So again, the news reports somebody has died and another murder attempted. We're going to call these people the dead person and the survivor. Since Morgans doesn't reveal any more than this, then I think that we can assume that two people were targeted. I think a solid conclusion here is that these two people were Vivi and Cobra, just based off of that number and all the reasons that we have to be concerned about their future. Cobra has had some massive death flags, and I think he can die in this way and it would be fine. I am not saying he for sure has to die here and now, but I would wager money he is going to die regardless. He is old and sick. In my opinion, his time is coming. Cobra being the person who has died and Vivi being the survivor is pretty believable. So assuming this, you guys of course know that the person I'm implicating is the world government in general, but like who specifically attacked them? I think that the most obvious guess, like what was actually revealed in the newspaper, uh, would have been Sabo. We know that something has happened to Sabo, but we do not know for sure that he is involved with these other plots. But for simplicity's sake, it's easy to speculate. We of course know that Sabo would not attack the royalty of Alabasta. However, it is not out of the question for him to be framed for doing so. But low key here is the truth. If we assume VB survived, she would know the truth, right? If she survived or escaped an assassination attempt, obviously the world government will come after her. Where she is or where she goes from here could be a big deal. They then could have captured Sabo and at the same time blamed him for it. But while Vivi is free to reveal the truth, this does not work. And if the newspaper identifies her as the survivor of an assassination, she has no reason to be locked up or doubted. The world government is capable of lying, but not in every way. So with this in mind, there are other ways to think about this. Garp preluded this chapter with a bit of ominous and forced conversation about how the leaders and kings at the Reverie do not get along. Reading this to me, it didn't feel natural. It felt like Garp was trying to say something, but never actually said it. They finally arrive in Ryugu Kingdom, and the first thing Garp says is, by the way, there's all sorts of conflict among member nations of the Reverie, and then from there he jumped directly into, I also want to prepare you for this new news that I didn't tell you about Alabasta and about Vivi. I assume these two things are related. The Kingdom of Alabasta had some kind of conflict with another nation from the Reverie. Maybe this whole news story centers around kingdoms fighting, Alabasta and another. So the person who, according to the news, died or whose murder was attempted, the survivor, was another country's leader. And if this is all a plot of the world government, who's to blame here? at least according to the news. Perhaps Alabasta, Vivi. Again, I believe that we are all assuming that the news is at least in part fake. But it seems like this idea that I just proposed seems like a trap and a lie the world government could realistically lay. This is different, interesting, and exciting. We are all assuming that Alabasta was attacked and that's what's reported in the news. And yes, that is still kind of true, but instead of the news, it blames them for an attack that they did not do. So somebody died and somebody survived. The person who died could still be Cobra. And even if Vivi had survived, if she screams to the world, I didn't do this, I'm not to blame, they won't believe her because she's being implicated in wrongdoing. They have reason to doubt her. The only counter argument here is if the world government planned all of this and Morgan's reported it accurately to their lies, why would the world government want to change the news? I want to start off, guys, that there was a lot of stories and there was potentially only one of these that the world government actually wanted to cover up or to change. For instance, there's a possibility that the world government wanted to cover up the bit about Sabo, which is unrelated to Vivi and Alabasta, but not the Vivi and Alabasta story. But I think that you could also think about it in a different way, perhaps to further the idea that this is the truth, they manipulated Morgans to believe it further by attempting to cover it up knowing he wouldn't buy it. It's all a charade. This would be next level, obviously. Uh, and so it's because of that, that I'm not entirely sure how believable this is. Like as an idea, it's really cool, but like would Oda go this deep? But it's in part because of all this that I kind of like the theory. It's smart. The world government should know Morgans doesn't trust them and would want to report the scoop this juicy accurately. Morgans has been around for years and it would make more sense than not that the world government would understand him about as fully as you could so they can predict what he will and won't do. Perhaps the world government has manipulated him in this kind of way for years. If the government is willing to buy the truth, it makes it seem all the more legitimate. I personally believe that if the government didn't believe that they could control Morgans and the news, they would kill him. They clearly could have before Stussy and all sorts of government agents have been able to get close enough uh, to be able to kill him. 
If he is not supporting their agenda, whether by force or by manipulation, then Morgans wouldn't be here. As for Sabo, he could have been caught on Alabasta's ship. I don't think that that's unreasonable. That could give them another reason to turn the world against Alabasta. Traitors and lawbreakers are working with the revolutionaries. Perhaps he saw what was occurring and involved himself in some way. I think it would be really difficult to know for sure. I'm also curious as to what a Wapple told Morgans. Really, think about this. What could Wapple know that would be related to all of these scoops? He has history with Vivi and Alabasta. One thing that he knows that hasn't been widely reported is Vivi's connection with the Straw Hat Pirates. I felt like since the Alabasta arc that Vivi's connection with them would at some point endanger her. It absolutely needs to be kept a secret for her safety and her country's well-being. That was the entire point of the end of the Alabasta arc when the crew held up X's on their arms rather than speaking openly. Vivi couldn't reveal she was talking to them. This can be used against her if the truth were ever revealed that for a while she was a member, basically, of the Strahd crew. And I also think that it's worth thinking about this as well. Why exactly is Wapple choosing now to reveal this about Vivi? A serious question I have is whether or not Wapple is working hand in hand with the government giving his scoop to Morgans because that is what the world government ordered. And to be fair, he didn't like Vivi anyway. We know that Wapo wants revenge against Dalton. He wants revenge against his former uh, country. I'm pretty sure that the world government can buy his services. And to be completely frank, we don't know exactly how the Black Drum Kingdom was even legitimized to begin with. This also, I think, teases at an interesting idea or concept. There could be some member nations of the world government present at the Reverie who are completely bought by the world government and, and would act as their pawns. They would lie or do whatever for the government. But for now, these are my speculations. In either case, Sabo and Vivi are in trouble. I think Sabo is for sure captured, and where we go from here will undoubtedly be big news. I can't help but be reminded of Ace. As for Vivi, she could be captured as well or on the run. The only thing I feel confident in is that she is not entirely free right now and is not safe. The government is after her. If they intended to murder her, I don't see why they would stop now. They will at least, as we suggested, try to frame her somehow. But we haven't yet talked about Boa. Obviously, Boa is in at least a little trouble. She is a warlord and the system has been abolished. As a pirate, she can no longer be queen of her country. She has to run. The last we saw is Kobe outside of her country intending on capturing her, bringing her to justice. Kobe, I think, will continue to pile up feats so that his renown in the Marines grow. Did he or will he defeat Boa? Part of me wants to say, yeah. It would be somewhat perfect if Luffy has to rescue her from Impel Down as before she snuck him into the prison itself. And keep in mind, she is a runaway slave. If she were ever to be captured and they discovered these markings uh, on her, they might just return her as the property that they deem her to be to her owner. Another part of me wonders if both characters' relationship with Luffy will matter. Would Kobe let Boa escape? Would Boa abandon her country, even knowing she's now a criminal? If she did leave her country, what would the world government try to do to the island of women? Could it still exist as it is? How it has always been? Either way, Oda suggests that she's going to be in trouble, and I believe it. I personally don't think that Boa would be in trouble if she just left her country and continued pirating. Pirates escape capture all the time. It seems more likely that she will get captured, and that makes the most sense if this happens while defending her country. As for the power scaling aspects of this, how strong I think Boa is and how strong I think Kobe is as of right now, no, it doesn't make perfect sense. That being said, every time we get introduced to Kobe, I assume that he is demonstrably stronger than he was before because as it appears to me, that is the direction that Oda is taking his character. He is in many ways the present day guard. Straight up guys, I'm really expecting a moment sometime in the near-ish future where Kobe appears and we actually get to see him fight and he just blows us away with how powerful he has become. That is my expectation. Lastly guys, the end game of One Piece will soon be in sight. The importance of these Straw Hats adventures and the meanings of their fights will become clear to us. I think maybe people are expecting me to call BS here, but I'm not. I don't think that this is fake news. Something huge is going to be revealed in Wano. They've said this so much that I just have to believe that it's true. They know what they plan on revealing in Wano. And I believe that is something that is going to wake up the entire fandom. I'm not ready for it, but I'm excited for it. What could it be? Poneglyphs? Void Sentry? I'm gonna be honest guys, based on everything Oda has said in this message, I'm kind of expecting the government to make its move. 
Maybe not in Wano, but during Wano. Become whatever they were always destined to be. Oda is a master of foreshadowing. Is he hinting at that here in this message? He's drawing attention not to the Straw Hats, not to Orochi, Kaido, and Big Mom, but Vivi, Sabo, and Boa. Characters not in Wano at all, but at critical positions for the future of the story. Or maybe it's reveals about this in combination with reveals on a number of other subjects that we've been waiting literal years uh, to find out about. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much all I had to say today. As always, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked the video. Dislike the video if you disliked the video. Subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.